In exercise two, we're going to need to learn, first of all, or you need to know how to move your insertion point. This linking line here is your insertion point. And you can use your mouse quite simply and click wherever you want your insertion point to move to. This is on an existing document, so I can scroll down and put my insertion point there. And uh, you know, from there, your backspace key will delete what's behind it. Or your forward, your delete key will delete whatever's in front of your insertion point. So once you get to where you want to be, you can do some editing, change things. You can insert things if you'd like, such as a date or another word. So if I had to, wanted to add another word here, I could. Simple stuff. Uh, however, when you're on a new document, so I'm just going to open up a new document here. This is your insertion point, and that's the end of your document. So you can't click somewhere else and move your insertion point because it's at the very end of your document. However, there's a new feature called Click and Type, which allows you to double click, and that'll move where your insertion point is going to end up going. So now if I double click here, it tells me, I'm looking at my little I beam here, it tells me that it'll center my paragraph for me. Here it's still left, so it'll be tabbed in. But here, if I double click right here, I will get a centered paragraph. And it changed that setting there. And I can type something here. Now, the reason I type these words is because it's a common theme when you're using a word processor. Uh, I recommend that you type the entire document in first, and then you do the formatting. Because when you hit enter, you're going to get exactly what you had in the last paragraph. So I've still got, or once again, I've got a centered paragraph. So if I wanted this to move to the left now, I'd have to stop and make this left aligned. If this had been bold and underlined, I would have gotten centered, bold, and underlined all over again. We're going to learn down the road that it's easier to center and to do all kinds of formatting when you're done typing. For now, we're going to type the entire document in and then change things such as formatting and alignment. Uh, while we're on the topic, though, Horizontal alignment has to deal with left, right, center. Justify uh, takes an entire paragraph. I'm going to take a, uh, find a nice big paragraph here if I can. Um, do I have a nice big paragraph that I can use here? Um, all right, this is a nice big one here. So now, it, what it will do is, left line means it's nice and flush on the left. Justify will also make it nice and flush on the right. So I'm going to put my insertion point inside this paragraph and hit Justify. And now all of these lines are nice and flush on the right-hand side. More on alignment later, but just wanted to cover that. I'm going to be asking you to use your show hide throughout this course. Your show hide is right here. I'm going to click it, and you're going to see all kinds of new characters on your page. Okay? You've got these backward P looking things, you've got these arrows, you've got dots between every word. These are non-printing characters. Um, they're almost like a legend uh, that tells you how your document came to look the way that it does. Sometimes people don't understand why they have a huge gap between two of their lines. And if they turn on their show hide, they would realize that they've got a whole bunch of empty paragraphs in there. And by deleting them, it would reduce that gap somewhat. So it's a real good idea to get to work with these, understand what they do, leave them on. That way, as you're working, you know exactly what's going on. If you want to see how pretty and beautiful your document is, turn it off, and then you can check it out. But uh, while you're working, leave them on. And if you're having to edit or fix somebody else's mess, uh, the first thing you need to do is turn that on to see exactly how they've come to where they are. Saving. We're going to be saving early, and we're going to be saving often throughout this course. I recommend that when you first open a document and start it before you even type anything, figure out what you want to name it and save it right away. Now, here I put the Save button right on this short toolbar. If it's not on your short toolbar, you can, of course, add it to your short toolbar from here, which I would recommend. Okay? If it's not there, it'll be here. And you can go Save. And if you haven't given it a name yet, it'll automatically go to Save As. In other words, it'll ask you to give it a name. Assets save early and save often. Every five minutes, you should just click that button. 
just to back up your work. So the old file is gone. It's been replaced with all of the changes you've made up until now. Save early, save often. Uh, print, we're not going to be printing in this course. Okay. However, uh, if you wanted to print, if you have to print something, again, from this icon, you can go to print, and it'll send a document to the printer. For the sake of budget, we're not going to be printing a whole bunch in this course. If you want to see what your document would look like if printed, there's a few features you've got. One of them is the ability to print preview. Now, I've added print preview to this button as well. Okay. However, if you don't have it up here, it would be here. It would go print, and then you can go to print preview, which brings you here. Okay, And that allows you to see your document. Now, to get out of print preview, you go there. Now, I'm going to switch back to this document just to give you another idea here. Um, easier, faster ways. I like this little button down here, this little zoom feature. If I want to see what my document's going to look like, from a bird's eye view, I can just keep clicking this to make it bigger or smaller. And that's a great little print preview. Another trick is to scroll and roll, okay? So, um, or control and roll, I should say. So put your control key down, and if you've got a mouse with a, a button, a rolling button, a scroll button, just scroll it. Up makes your document bigger, down makes it appear smaller. And it gives you a bird's eye view of your document. So now I'm going up and now I'm going down. So for my money, I preferred these features to Print Preview because Print Preview used to be right up here on your menu, but now they've kind of hidden it. It's here, Print, and Preview. By the time I've done that, I could have easily controlled and rolled and gotten to see more of my document.